Hello. Welcome, Melanie Seibert. Hello. <laughs> Welcome for a lovely womankind chat. Welcoming to our womankind world. Um, do you know, Mel, what I adore about the work that you do and the work that I've witnessed is that you you bridge you bridge worlds absolutely beautifully with your work in schools and your women's work it's it's such a um such a glorious bridge of um of welcoming women and girls to meet themselves and to show up in such a a carefully held and gentle way um so please mel share share with us your bridging of the world. <laughs> My bridging of the world. <laughs> well, um, yeah, I guess so. The one world is the education world where um, well, I started teaching in 2002 and in 2003 was given the sex ed and relationships education, the CSHG um, stuff as well, mm -hmm. and became very inspired by a teacher that I had on a course, which became part of, of something that I was very passionate about and there was just far too much um, not good enough work going on in that area. Um, and so before I came to all the women's work, I was working with kids and supporting them in understanding who they were and how they change and how that might affect them and answering their questions. and. Mm supporting them with their self-esteem, their body their sense of self and connection to themselves. And then uh, then I was lucky enough to start working with women um, because I went and did some work with women myself mm -hmm. and uh, work with women in, in ways that help them connect to themselves as well. So <laughs> I, I used to think I wore different hats and there was this education me and this um, women's worker me and then I realised that actually what I was getting were women who maybe if they had had this really quality support as young people may not have had all the experiences they had that brought them to that space with me um, and maybe choice to making would have been different then loving themselves would have been earlier and all of those things so yeah a bridge a bridge <laughs> thank bridge. thank the goddess for the bridge <laughs> yeah, yeah really precious precious way it, it, it starts it starts with it starts with the next generation um and well look i was personally lucky enough to to spend time with you and with my daughter at her Menarch ceremony, her, her ceremony leading to her first period, um, which she hasn't had, had yet, but to have had that transition in a ceremonial way is, um, it's so precious and made such an impact on her and on the two of us, our connection. So, oh Mel, what, um, what was it? What, how did you choose? Why, why and how did you choose what you did and created on that? on that day for us mm, well um i had my own uh, monarch ceremony when i it was uh, 22 i think in 2012 um because i knew that there were things that i hadn't the things that i'd brought with me that i didn't need to carry anymore that were building into my kind of story of who i was at that time um and for that i did a lot of googling and brought up a lot of and, and, and crafted a film and from that but it, since then I've been very much um, involved in kind of watching the connections between people and, and, and within people and um, I've worked with a lot of different people to bring uh, and take little bits and snippets of things that I think would really support mothers, yeah. women uh, in connecting to themselves, connecting to what they want and, and need and being able to bring that out and share it um, to things like um, talking about our own period stories and our own kind of teen years 
enables us to kind of relive and heal as we're talking about it. So it's all it's healing the the daughter before you've gone and done the ceremony with the daughter already, as well as healing the mother and the ancestral line to her. Um, and you gave us an evening for that. That was yeah, a yeah, the mother's evening for us. Yeah, yeah, and that, and that was a really integral part. Um, I didn't have something like that for mine, um, mm. but actually bringing the women together beforehand, using things like the dispatcher ceremony, the gratitude ceremony, mm. to really connect into what we were doing, why we were doing it, and the wonder and the such gratitude of every step of the daughter and what was going to come um and the personal healing journeys of the telling the stories and the wound healing and um the the boats are closing the bones yeah. the the nurturing yeah. um as well as the things like we made a necklace and we wrote a letter mm. um, for the daughters just to share all the things that we wanted them to hear in this space where we were quite open because we'd had all this time to work together. Yeah. yeah. So that was the main thing, the connection, the healing, the, the, the understanding what was going to happen and, and bringing out all the reasons and things we wanted to, to give to the, the daughters on that day. And then like a few days later, I met with the daughters and that, um, the first parts of that were about building a, a relationship together mm-hmm. because they didn't know each other, um, playing some silly games, um, uh, and then looking at the physicalities of things that were going to happen and um, moving forward into the kind of emotions and the seasons and um, creating a, a space to move forward from um, mm-hmm. in the knowledge of I know what's going to happen now mm-hmm. um, and, I, and I also know that I've got this this other person in the room, my parents, um, this, this other woman in the room, who can uh, straight away a circle of people I can call on yeah. when I need them in this space. Yeah. Um, and we made crowns for each other, the idea being that they were able to really talk and share and be with each other. And we could also discuss different things that came up and, and the ceremony that we were going to do. So. They were really prepared for what was going to happen and knew that they had a um, handle on the way it went. So it wasn't just being done to them. We were all crafting this together. Um, the same as some things that happened in the mother's family. And then after lunch, we created a threshold and a, a walkway mm. and smudged before we went in to <laughs> make this site that sacred space and the mothers went and sat in the circle in their space you know, this sisterhood circle and the daughters with fits of giggles and <laughs> a real understanding I think that they knew it was something big but it was also something that had not been part of before yeah. um, took their steps down and we used feathers and candles and soil and water to give a blessing from each of the elements and they gave each other their crown and took their place in the circle of sisters where mums read their letters and gave necklaces and then cried. And tears were shed. <laughs> <laughs> tears. And, oh, yeah. 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 A, whist- a whistle stop tour of um, what was crafted lovingly, carefully, with everybody in mind to allow everybody to walk same path, yeah. the daughters after the mothers, and become these maidens, these little women ready for this next step. And that was such that a strong support. message. That was such a strong message is that there was no pressure to to jump into being a woman. You've become a woman now. That 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 um, that was held so gently by you. So it's, uh, it, it's it's this gradual process. Yes, it's a, a threshold you've crossed, but. Um, but it, it doesn't have to be overwhelming and, and frightening. Yeah, no. you're not. You don't have to be on your own as an adult now. You, you are very much still um, a young woman, a very, a, a, still a child, yeah. but traversing these steps. Oh, beautiful, precious memories. Thank you. 
that <laughs> deserve to be shared out to the women's world. So the work that you've, you've done in, the, in schools now, um, I, I'd love to know, I mean, I, I've witnessed what it's like to, to, to see young girls experience it in ceremony form. Um, but in, in the work, in your work with schools, it would be so lovely to hear what, what you've seen in girls, what you've witnessed in girls who have had that opportunity to, to honour their bodies, to honour themselves, to honour their cycles. What, yeah, mm. it would be great to hear what your witness is of mm. Mm. Yeah. that difference. Yeah, it is huge. Um, I've been thinking about when I first started doing this, um, my own knowledge was mostly factual and, and that's what I passed on and, and I tried to answer questions as honestly as possible and, mm. and be that person that could be trusted to, yeah. to, to come to me with their problems and things like that. But as, as time went on and I became more... Um, menstrually literate and able to hold a space mm. um the the difference has been it's been huge you you notice the the bravado and the, the silliness and the mm. uh, oh this is a bit too much kind of attitude turning into a more um okay tell me more okay these are my actual questions these are the things i need to know um and you see them walking a little bit taller and a little bit straighter and a, uh, a bit more proud of themselves mm. and who they are rather than kind of shying away as somebody maybe who's, who's changing shape and doesn't know how to deal with it. It's, yes. it's, it's much more of a... I know what's happening and why mm. it's happening. I am prepared and, and I'm free to ask my questions and I'm free to speak about this to people. And It's really different. And something else I, I notice is over time, the parents change as well. Mm. They mm. become more comfortable to ask you to do, can you put this in, uh, and this has been happening to my daughter, can you, can you support them or to my son? It, it's really um, it become a, it becomes a whole family thing rather, or mm. a, a whole community thing rather than just this one child bobbing around going, what's happening to me? Yeah, it's huge. And I, I would love to do a massive study and watch somebody go past being 12 or 13 yeah. and come back at being 20, yeah. you know, and, and, and say what happened as a result. But as yet, that's... See the process that's through. Come. Yeah. Reunions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Opportunity for reunions. <laughs> Like the HSE reunion, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it would it would be so wonderful, um, wouldn't because, it? Because, like I said before, the, the quality of the, this education is not always so good because we're still in a state of taboo and myth and fear and, and not yeah. wanting to even use the word to the genitals, you know. And, mm. And also in in not understanding the menstrual cycle, so to be the person who's educating and to have that knowledge, it opens such a huge world up. Um, and hopefully, it's going to just get bigger and bigger and bigger, you know, and as more and more people understand and, and well, yeah, you're in collaboration, aren't you, Mel? Um, setting to to make huge changes for the next generation for boys and girls i understand it's this isn't just yeah. girls so please please share what your project that you're collaborating with mm. so i'm um, working with emily stewart of the real period project mm -hmm. um who spent a good amount of time beavering away on a, a lesson um it's like an afternoon lesson. Mm. We wanted to do two hours, but the school didn't give us a time. We've got an hour and a half mm. based just on every aspect of the menstrual cycle with the <laughs> intention of um, building uh, an, a, a good understanding of the menstrual cycle, co personal confidence, 
um, empathy so that everybody within the space knows what it is, knows this, about the seasons in a really basic way, but one that knows that the energies may change as we go across the, around the cycle. Yeah. Um, look, we look at loads of different products we use with all the disposable cups, um, period pants, things like that. Yeah. Um, uh, really in detail about the inside of the body and what what the womb and, uh, and all the organs look like and what mm -hmm. they do. Um, yeah, and then a little bit about um, uh, case studies. So bringing out the empathy about it, you know, to to, mm -hmm. to get everybody to go, okay, how, what what will this person do? How can we help them? And mm -hmm. so we've done the pilot, and after the first one, we were like, well, <laughs> we need to make some changes. And then we did the second one, and we did this big high five, a massive hug as soon as everybody left the room. Oh. And and there the were teachers. It's in the huge. Room. It is. It's, it's, it's huge. Fabulous. There were teachers in the room who came back afterwards and said, "I didn't know about X, Y, and Z." And so it's it's more than just the children, you know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah. Oh. Out, you get to do more, and yeah. I think what I think that's really important. What you said that the teachers are recognizing once the teachers recognize how important it is, and, and the children feedback on that. Oh. Mm -hmm how far this can go so yes pushing from from all of us that practice mm -hmm. menstruality <laughs> it's a big thank you to and it all you have <laughs> oh gosh yeah. yes absolutely mm -hmm. so what what we've built here is this picture of of the amount of work you do the amount of work you give out the amount of love and care you share with the world <laughs> But a massive part of what we we do with women kind with womankind is um, it's self care. Mm. So it would be really lovely to hear what your kindness is to yourself look like. What do you do to to welcome in kindness to your own life? Mm. Well, I've recently realised that I need to up the ante with my kindness. I thought I was being very kind and um, got myself into a bit of a, a overwork where I was just saying yes to everything after becoming self-employed. And mm. so there are things I do now, like my calendar, which is, I don't even see it was there. That's a really empty calendar, by the way, um, <laughs> compared to the one I just took off the wall. In, that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Um, but what I do is I put days off on there and I am now sticking to them and actually having a day off. But I'm finding that I have to do things like I have to go out. I have to go to the beach or to the forest or um, just mooch somewhere. There's a really nice um, public space around by me where I can just go and be and I'm not thinking about work. I turn my internet off because I'm a bit of a constant, if somebody messaging me, I'll, I'll reply straight away. And, just trying to kind of leave that space and, and, and just have some me time. Um, yeah, I uh, I started five rhythms on New Year's Eve, and my Friday night uh, there's nobody I'm going to work for on a Friday night. I go to five, <laughs> five rhythms and I dance and I dance for two and a half hours nonstop, and it just makes it's just fantastic. That's yeah. really for me. And um, and uh, I've recently started a, a therapy swap with um, a room massage swap with a, another local roomie um, because it, it was in my head for a long time to go and go and have something nice for me, go and have something yeah. nice for me. I never did it, and then she she mentioned it, and I was okay. So now we're <laughs> we're monthly giving ourselves that time. She was around yesterday, and I had mine last week. So we, we're monthly giving ourselves that time to to receive, mm. Um, mm. and I'm trying, trying to stop, uh, like when it gets to be easy. But you know, watch this space. There's more. Mm. There's much more that can come. So. Are you? Do you find that it's? Um, how do you find that your menstrual cycle affects your self care? <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> It, 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 yeah, it, 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 how it affects my self-care or is affected by? Uh, both, really. Both, well, yeah. yeah, I mean, what, 
yeah you, you share you share mm. well um two months ago i had a, a really painful period um mm -hmm. which is not normal anymore it used to be um but in 28 months i've now had two two mm -hmm. bad periods and um I was a bit like, why is this happening? I've been looking after myself. I've been not moving as much, you know, not being so busy, but what I was doing was sitting on the sofa, thinking about work and coming up with loads of ideas and things like that. So I wasn't really not working, I wasn't resting. Mm. And I, another self-care thing I do every morning is um, I write just three pages, just straight away, just write. Mm. And when I look back on that, all of it was telling me to rest. And, um, <laughs> So my body turned around and said, you're going to bloody well rest yeah. and, you know, you're going to have, have pain because you've not been listening. Um, so if I'm really stressed and I don't recognise it and I don't do something about it, it comes out in my, in my blue. Yeah. Um, and also if I've got things that I've not maybe taken from the last uh, autumn, yeah. that was, was niggling, if I've not done anything about it, mm -hmm. then it will come back in the next autumn mm -hmm. and be louder and a bit, and a bit more um, all-encompassing, does that make sense? Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and so, yeah, uh, so that's how it affects my cycle. Um, and, and then the I guess... self-care. Yeah, and the self-care. Um, my cycle into a beautiful place. Yeah. It is a place, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, well, and I, I, even when our menstrual cycle shouts at us, so even when our wounds start shouting at us, I mean, that that then is a reminder to you that that that, you, that something needs to happen, something needs to be actioned or changed or stopped or, and that again feeds into what you can, what you're teaching, yeah. you're teaching the girls and the boys. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost like nature gives us a, hey, this is another lesson here, isn't it? Mm. And being able to turn around to, to young people and tell them that um, you, you shouldn't have regularly really horrific and painful feelings you shouldn't be having those yeah. because they're already at 10 and 11 believe that that's what's going to happen and that you take some pills to stop it being able to start to drop seeds in to change that narrative is, is huge absolutely huge generation changing <laughs> generation changing yeah. um Yes, Mel, thank you, thank you. you. Um, it's an absolute joy to to see to see over the years how your how your work has just yeah. just blossomed, bloomed, and and the amount that you're taking out into the world, and the importance of that self kindness being so loud and clear to you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So thank Absolutely. you for your time. I'm going to share all your details underneath the, the video. So thank you. anybody that wants massage care and ceremony and teachers out there who want to bring mm -hmm. Mel and Emily into their schools and, and change lives, then yeah, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's all there. So, thank you. Thank, thank you, you Mel. <laughs> Bye. Bye.